Jailbirds, that's our word, brought to you by Room for Freedom, which is a Airbnb app for libertarians where you can actually pay for rooms uh, when you're traveling across country uh, with Bitcoin, gold, silver, whatever you want, even, yeah, even at Federal Reserve notes. It's an Indiegogo campaign, and of course, it's uh, one of Ben Stone's brilliant ideas. The dude is absolutely brilliant, except for that book that I bought, which was... I definitely condone it, buy it, but you should probably buy it too. Um, <laughs> and definitely. yeah, and of course we're also, um, I don't, I don't know. You you don't you don't do um, you don't do kratom, do you? Oh, by the way, you should probably say who you are. <laughs> What's up? Here. I'm David. <laughs> yes, of course. I'm uh, David Lucart from the ZGY Zombies Government New Podcast. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Not much. I uh, know I've never done I've never done the kratom. Okay, you're, you're, uh, I, I am interested though. I oh. not to have to cash Newman. Well, <laughs> use your link there. <laughs> Funny you should notice because we actually have a, an affiliate link which is kratom dot com. And if you're not into kratom, we also have an Amazon thing too, which of course you know the drill. It's not going to cost you any more to use our link, which is shop dot com. Now that we got all the plugs out of the way. Uh, how's it going, man? <laughs> How are things in Arizona? Oh, dude, it's windy, but nice. I'm living the dream. Just got off work, drinking a beer. Lo loving life, brother. Yep. I've been on a real wine kick lately. I've been drinking this uh -huh. um, 2015 Malbec that I've been having sitting out all night, so it's just been decanting and breathing. And Oh, it's so much better than the first one I had <laughs> at like 2 o'clock in the morning, which is like 2 o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> for me. I've just been sipping on so this thing It's all, all relative. Yeah. It's all relative. Nice, man. How's... How's your journey towards being a uh, sommelier coming along? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did a joke Indiegogo, or not Indiegogo, uh, GoFundMe campaign. And uh, some people were like really confused, like, what the hell is this all about? Because they didn't see the, the what, what I was parroting. Um, but yeah, what's her name? Macy Tomlin? Is that her name? I don't remember Macy. her last name. It's yeah. Macy something. But she was... That's about as close as you can get. <laughs> Kokesh's ex-fiance. Uh, <laughs> Uh, she 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 released some pretty damning info inf information on it. He pretty much collaborated lo like a lot of it. Uh, collaborated. Uh, he basically Co confirmed. Collaborated. Collaborated. There we go. Most of the one information of the, of that was in there, and and it was kind of weird, especially the jerking off in the parking lot thing was just the best. Uh. But she decided that she's going to go on this journey to uh, to be a shaman, which you know more power to you. But she was also making these kind of weird, outlandish claims that like ayahuasca cures cancer, <laughs> multiple sclerosis, and it's like, did someone let Jerry Lewis know this? <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't get the memo, so C I kind of made like, the a the telephones. <laughs> it's it's everything's been solved. <laughs> What's he, what's he going to do now with all his uh, time, you know? Yeah. Jeez. And uh, someone and told me. Mere, and for a mere, what, $2,000, you you know, you could uh, be a, a part of uh, her furthering that development. <laughs> yeah, $2,000 that, for a three-month ayahuasca a bender. <laughs> that's pretty much what she's doing. <laughs> nice work if you can get it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember there was so. someone who told me, I'm not going to mention names, but they told me that they met her in... Um, in Acapulco, Arco, uh, Poco, and she was just bragging on about how much she loves ayahuasca and all this stuff. And he was, th he wanted to say, but he didn't say that. Like, wow, it must be awesome to uh, <laughs> to have everybody think you're cool because of your drug addiction. <laughs> 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 you know, not to say that like ayahuasca has some benefits. It clearly does. Like, any a lot of these psychedelics do have like a lot of beneficial things that, that can come of it. Curing cancer, yeah, not one of them. Uh, you know, solving no. all of your mental illnesses, not one of them. Definitely not. <laughs> no, but you, it's you know it's been helped some people with P, with PTSD and mm -hmm. other things you know so yeah I mean not ayahuasca necessarily but other like I said other psychedelics so but yeah it's not a panacea or a, a you know a, a magical elixir yeah thank you <laughs> it's, ah. if you present it like that then it turns from something beautiful into something snake oily and it's gross <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I had I had some issues with um, because I had a friend pass away a few years ago from a car accident. He was driving while angry, and um, it was really uh. sad. But it was like I couldn't I couldn't come to grips with the fact that he was. Not, I mean I, I I I was one of the first people to hear that he passed away. Like I was one of the first people people called about it. 
Uh, I went to the funeral, and it was like nothing. Like I, and it was, I couldn't like be sad about it because like my mind couldn't wrap around the idea like he's dead. You know, that's not no, no, he's not dead. Like I knew that it was true, but I just really could. It just really didn't hit me. And so I, you know, I used mushrooms, and I knew this, and I knew I was going to have a bad mm-hmm. trip. But I did it intentionally to really get myself to really grasp that fact, and that really helped. So I'm not saying that you know psychedelics have don't have any kind of use value. They do, uh, especially in you know in mental health. But come on, man, cancer. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. That's yeah. Just wrong. Yeah. Well, but, and you know, I, I have a. I'm sorry. Go on. No, go ahead. It's all you. I say I have a friend who is a doctor. He's an, he's an MD, and I've talked to him about it, and he's like, he, from what he told me, it's basically there's no one cure all for cancer because everyone's you know physiology or biology is so different so what can help one person may not do anything for another person or um yeah so I, everyone's looking for that that magic bullet or whatever but yeah i don't think you're gonna find it on gofundme no <laughs> nope 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 um but speaking speaking of um, women, <laughs> it's Equal Pay Day. Well, at least when we're recording this, I'm, I'm probably not going to upload it until tomorrow. But uh, it, it was Equal Pay Day when we recorded this, yay! Because women women make what was it, seventy percent? No, seventy five. Seventy. No, no, eighty. Yeah, seventy one. Or sixty percent. That's a new number. For anytime you ask anybody, it's a new number. <laughs> but it's like to, yeah. to the dollar of every man. Um, which is true, right? Isn't that right? Didn't I? Wasn't that right? I mean, I've heard it so many times. It, Perhaps you can it must explain. Be. <laughs> if you repeat a lie often enough, doesn't it become the truth? Yeah. That's what Gorbel um, says. Well, there, I mean, there's probably an element of truth to it just because of, but it's not that they're being paid less. It's that generally they work less due to, um, you know, leaving the, the workforce to raise children or, or what ha- you know, or or working, or even going part time, you know, to to take care of children in the home, and that's usually something that the women the the woman does in the relationship. Or, um, I've also heard that maybe they take more sick time or or what have you. But yeah, more like generally, it's because leave. yeah, yeah, maternal leave, all all that stuff factors into it. Yeah, so and also it's, also it's, the career choices so, they kind of go into. They they choose to like was it social whereas men t- kind of choose like stem fields or construction or something like that high risk fields where ex- yeah more. Exa- exactly more, yeah. more of the high risk or uh, science or math oriented fields which yeah. yeah obviously have a generally have a higher pay scale rather than a educational like my my wife uh, got her degree in education um and uh once she you know she was going to get her masters but once we had children she scaled back on that and now she stays home uh, with our with our son, and uh, runs her own tutoring business in the afternoon. Oh, nice. You know what I mean? Which she makes, you know, she makes good money doing. But that's just an example. You know, she technically she makes more per hour than I do. Mm. Uh, I just work more. Mo- I just work more hours. You know. Yep. So, uh, so it's it's all the devil's always in the details. It's really easy to like latch onto a soundbite or a quote unquote statistic, but. I think when you dig into the nitty gritty about it, that's where the meat the meat of it is, and you find out that it's not true. Yeah. Well, they actually did like a, a an actual study where they actually control well, actually 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 I've been actually too much, um, where they looked into like the the pay scales for that, but factored in all of those variables and equalized it for those. So they compared like to like, which how you're supposed to do with these kind of tests, right? Uh, so they compared right. like to like, and they found out that the difference there actually is a deficit in women, and it's about seven cents. And then they did even more investigation. And they found out that it's it's caused by the fact that women tend not to negotiate pay. So when they go into a job, I kind of do the same thing too. A lot of, a lot of people do, but women it tends to be a mm-hmm. little bit more that when they get into a job, they will take anything that's offered to them. Whereas men will be like, no, mm, uh, I think you can do better. Yeah, yeah. 20, 20, 23 an hour. How about, how about, how about 25? Just make it straight 25. You know, there's some negotiation <laughs> going on uh, and that's right. where the discrepancy is. And I think, I think the best solution for that was just, is just to teach people, not just women, but teach people in general how to negotiate during an interview. They need to stop looking at that as from like these merciful people are going to give me a job and think that and know what it really is. And it's it's a trade between two people. I'm selling you my work and you're paying me. Yeah. Right? Trading your yeah. labor. For- yeah. 
Yeah, well, Jim, seven cents is still oppression, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Stop perpetuating the patriarchy. It's clearly rape <laughs> culture on top of that somehow. <laughs> uh, culture. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> wage rape. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't pan out at the end of the day. I mean, and, and there, like you said, there's all those sociological or, or, uh, I don't want to say personality traits, but, um, you know, that factor into it. So, yeah, because women are kind of better with people anyway. There was a, a good book that I read and I highly recommend it. I can't remember what the title of it is. I'm recommending you a book. I don't know the title of, but it's, it's. <laughs> It's about body language, and it really kind of explains like how body language works and how you can tell if people are lying because they have like little tells. But it's not just for lying; mm -hmm. it's for all kinds of human behavior. It tells you if they're excited to see you, all that stuff. And one of the things, yeah, that well, are... like some. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I say something like ninety percent of of human communication is nonverbal. Mm -hmm. it, like, you especially know, so that Italians. fully makes sense. Hey, <laughs> is that meme still alive? <laughs> uh there was, it was it's, it might still be around it's pretty short lived but i yeah. i enjoyed it i enjoyed its time in the sun so <laughs> but you were saying uh everyone has a tell or yeah like there's usually kind of tells that that you know certain body language should go through and i should go through it again because i still have i still struggle with it um but the, there's like two different types of people that are really good with body language, and that's the elderly because they've been around for so long and they just they just understand it just through life lessons, and women of all ages are really good with body languages, and it's because they're really good with kind of human interaction more than men because you know men are the ones that went out in the work field and were working mostly by themselves to scavenge and forage while women stayed home and yeah. socialized Hunt, with hunting the woolly mammoth. Yeah, hunting the woolly mammoth. So yeah, like women just kind of evolutionary evolved into kind of having that social dynamic. So they kind of tend towards social fields. More power to them. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And you know those yeah, those fields tend tend to pay less, unfortunately. So, um, well, depending on the work, they could be doctors, right. therapists. Yeah. yeah, rewarding in other ways. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Or it's all rape culture. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's the hierarchy, bro. Smash it. <laughs> <laughs> Smash that motherfucking like button and the patriarchy at the same time. Uh, <laughs> Triggered. Yeah. So you were telling me need, need a trigger button on the on the keyboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you were telling me about before we started recording something about Susan Rice, and I was like, yeah, just tell me on air because I don't know anything about it. I think I heard some murmurings about it. I kind of know who – I think I know who she is. She was the one that uh, – she was basically the scapegoat for the Obama administration during the whole Benghazi thing when they were all saying, like, oh, yeah, it was a terror yeah. – um, it, was it wasn't a terrorist attack. It was a response to some YouTube video, and it turned out not to be true. And they are like, oh, it's all, it's all her fault. It's all her fault. She made up that lie. It was all her fault. So what was – what's yeah, the news another, I mean – Oh, uh, she, she was a former national security advisor and uh, – she kind of got caught up, once again, being, I guess, the fall guy almost, uh, accused of inappropriate fall woman. Sorry. I didn't want to assume her gender. Um, <laughs> fall, per, fall person. Her gender? <laughs> fall, I think she's her, a there, zero. I'm sorry. There, yeah, whichever of the uh, 200 there are. Uh, she basically got blamed for uh, inappropriately spying on President Trump and, his, and members of his transition team. Ooh, I'm not sure. The, I, th I thought the, the whole the plot thing sickens. I thought the whole thing with wiretapping Trump was false, but there was some truth in the fact that they were wiretapping communications from Russia, and there was some dialogue back and forth from the Trump administration that was caught up in it, and that's where the truth right. lied in that so, whole yeah. in the whole Trump thing, which because just Trump's kind of brilliant. Maybe unintentionally, but he's kind of brilliant in this kind of thing because he'll say like these outlandish things. The media will talk about it and say, "Oh, look, it's absolutely false. He's absolutely crazy." And then it turns out there's a there's a like a portion of it that's true enough that needs to be talked about, and they would not have talked about it had he not made the big stink about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's the Teflon Don, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's just you know some stuff sticking, but he manages to slide out from under enough of it. It seems like, yeah. Maybe it's all the the spray tan, or I don't know the <laughs> the, the mango Mussolini. <laughs> the mango Mussolini's got a you know he's a slick he's a slick character. Yeah, 
I mean, so yeah, she's tied up in that. Um, I'm just gonna say it's probably racist and sexist because oh, yeah. they're blaming a black woman. So <laughs> she <Should we> just. <laughs> and it's kind of funny, like uh, how how crazy the left has been going, especially like the media. There was a um, uh, a pre- the the press secretary, the current press secretary for Trump, Spicer. He um, Spicer. By the way, have you seen Melissa McCarthy's like impression of him? It's fucking brilliant in every way. <laughs> it's one of the I heard best it, I heard it was really good. I heard it was really good, but I genuinely am not a fan of her. So I exactly. kind of like no, I let it slide. But I'll, 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 yeah. I think it was like the only time thing, she's ever made me laugh. <laughs> the only time she's ever made me laugh uh, was the spicier thing. But it's perfect. But there was a um, – reporters were asking questions about the Russia connection like they, that they normally do because they're looking for anything to try to impeach the guy. And he was oh, like yeah. – he was like, look, you, this these questions – like she asked some sort of like spurious connection. And he was like, look – if Trump puts Russian salad dressing on his salad, you guys would be reporting that as like some sort of like connection before from Putin. <laughs> this is absolutely insane. And he was explaining to her like this it- connection is very spurious. And while he was explaining, she kept like trying to inject some more questions in. And he was like, look, and, and, and he was like shooting them all down and then going like, no, stop shaking your head. Now, <laughs> because this reporter was a black woman. There was articles out the next day saying, like, this was clearly racist on the part of Sean Spicer because he told a a black woman not to shake her head. Rewind the clock back to the (laughs) – but someone found some, like, um, uh, it was, like, footage from Obama, from the Obama uh, press secretary. And he was telling some other – I think some other black reporter – don't shake your head. <laughs> he was like asking him tough questions, <laughs> and it was like, "Well, what about that? Is he racist too?" It, it's so. It's well, so. No, he's weird. only half white. <laughs> no, the reporter was. <laughs> the reporter was uh, black. No, I thought. I thought you said Obama was shaking his head. I said, you know, he's only half white, yeah. so it's it's okay. <laughs> it's half racist. Right. It's only half racist. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> there's, there's crap like that. What was the other one? So Trump said that uh, Maxine Waters' ha- uh, wig looked like James Brown's hair. That was racist. <laughs> and she was like, I can't believe not, the racist not, things he said about me. <laughs> hey! Not wrong. <laughs> no, it wasn't wrong. She didn't feel good. <laughs> she, did not, wrong. she did not feel good about that. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. That's amazing. It, but this whole thing. Is I, would, I would have taken that as a compliment, man. I mean, it's James Brown, bro. The Godfather is sold, bro. You know? If you're going to get compared to James Brown, I'd be like, hell yeah, I'll, I'll take that any day of the week. Yeah. I get but compared to Louis C.K., but does anyone like say that that's racist because you know he's Mexican <laughs> or something? I don't know. <laughs> it, yeah. Is he? Yeah, he's he's actually more Mexican than. Uh, is he sp- Hispanic or? I, yeah, I he was born in that. Mexico. I you think know? he was born in Mexico. I have to double check that. But I remember there was a big thing about how he was more Mexican than Carlos. Uh, uh, who is that rip? Oh, yeah, that ripped everybody. Mencia. Off. Yeah, Carlos Mencia. <laughs> sure, he wasn't just appropriating their culture. <laughs> uh, Probably. <laughs> um, no, you know, because he looks almost. I don't want to say straight up Irish to me, but you know. He's got kind of the 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 red, uh, you know, tinge to his his scruff. So yeah, but, so here know, we go. The Irish and the Mexicans do have kind of a. <laughs> did you drop out there? No, no, no. Uh, let's see, Louis C. Uh, oh, okay. C. I was letting you finish. I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> see, I'm gonna Louis, let you finish. C.K.'s paternal Thanks, grandfather uh, was a surgeon, uh, and was a Hungarian Jew whose family immigrated to Mexico. Um, oh, there you go. So, yeah, and... Yep, so I guess he has some ties to Mexico. I guess he lived in Mexico for a little bit Very when cool. he was little, so... Yep. Right on. So nothing again. wrong with that, man. No, nothing wrong I, uh, with that, but... Yeah, but anyways... <laughs> Yo quiero... <laughs> Te amo Mexico, man. Yeah. You know, I live close to it, so... Love the food. The people are great. Oh, I, man. I don't have a problem with them. I love me some Mexican food. Like real I like Baja Mexican food. I don't really once you start kind of going yeah. east of Arizona, it starts getting kind of bland. Um mm-hmm. yep. Green chilies are good. Yeah. Chiles. 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 Well, it's got the a hatch. lot of lime. 
when it's got a lot of lime yeah. and uh, yeah, tomatillos and stuff like that, that's when it's really good. But yeah, um, Susan Rice. <laughs> I love how everything is just kind of falling apart, and the, the Obama administration is still getting hit, even though they're not even in office anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you know, they definitely laid some booby traps for them, and uh, like, it's not all working out as nope. much as they'd like, but, you know, got to love politics. Yeah. The, 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 that was the one of the things that I never could shake when I became a libertarian. When I when I was young, when I when I was a liberal, I was one of those people who would watch I, my oh, my uh my computer uh, computer my TV was always on C-SPAN. Like I would watch C-SPAN and it would be like entertaining for me. So, was it just James Weeks on a loop? <laughs> <laughs> Stripping. <laughs> Uh, As it should be. That's that's As that's for be. after hours when my friend leaves with a bottle of lube. But um, this oh, was yeah. uh, <laughs> this was um, <laughs> no, I, I just I just found it entertaining, like to listen to congressional hear uh, congressional hearings and you know just Congress sessions and stuff like that. I thought it was interesting. But even when I became I libertarian, thought I was the only one. <laughs> yeah, when I became libertarian, a lot of that kind of fell. Like I can't do that anymore. That I'll turn that on if I'm no. trying to sleep. Like if I'm trying to go to sleep and I have an insomnia, <laughs> yeah. that'll put me right out. Listen, <laughs> listen to someone do a book review. It's, either that or it'll just piss me off. God damn it. Yeah, <laughs> <Sean. laughs> yeah but. So. Yeah. Go on. C-SPAN. So, but that was one of the things I still couldn't <laughs> shake. Even though I couldn't, I can't stand C-SPAN anymore. I can still, like, enjoy following elections and all that sort of thing. So that's why I kind of talked about a lot of it during the uh, thing. And on top of that, that's what everybody's searching for during elections. <laughs> so, so it's a little bit of mar marketing as well. <laughs> so it's like Trump, Absolutely. Clinton, Johnson, those kind of search terms are always popping up during the election. So I'm going to talk about those things. And that's what people want to, people want to hear. So, yeah. Hey, finger to the pulse. Yeah. So it's kind of – even still, when this is all kind of going on, I am just love following the Trump administration because he's such an anomaly. And he's really kind of pointing out and making people aware like, no, it's not just an unknowing bias. This is – like this is a knowing bias that, that the media has had. And we all just kind of ignore it for a while because they, they do a pretty good job of pretending like they, they're, they're objective by you know slipping in a story here and a story there about how bad Obama is. But – but now this is all like tr Trump twenty four seven. It's like but everything that you're complaining about Trump about Obama did. <laughs> Why is it now a problem? You know because it's not right. your guy, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. Knives, it's knives out, man. Yeah. Um, but there's yeah, obviously there's uh, very little difference or daylight between them. It's just uh, it's a matter of it's you know it's our guy when our guy does it great mm -hmm. when uh, the uh, the angry Cheeto does it not so much. <laughs> Which, which, How many names you know, do you have? Like, I, do you have like a list in front of you <laughs> reading like all the Trump uh, Trump puns? I actually did. <laughs> I have. I found a website: the twenty best nicknames for Donald Trump. Nice. Should we, you want to do it, Rook? No. Nah. Yes. Actually, the, the last one. Eight, eight, <laughs> uh, twenty. This is uh, citypages.com. So, agent. This is probably one of my favorites because I love punk bands. But Agent Orange. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's an old uh, reference. An old <laughs> yeah, some of some of them aren't so good. Uh, I'll just read the good ones. Hair Führer, uh, <laughs> Angry Cheeto, um, Prima Donald, Prima Donald. It was kind of cheesy. <laughs> yeah, it's still pretty funny though. Uh, let me see. Oh, maybe Tangerine Jesus. Maybe. I <laughs> Maybe I should have said that was cheesy about the angry Cheeto thing, but go ahead. <laughs> I we should have had you read this in your impression because I, I don't do that good of a Trump impression. Oh, my so, Trump impression is kind of waning. <laughs> it's, it's morphing into yeah, Bernie you're, Sanders. You're just, <laughs> you're just out of practice. Yeah, there's not much difference. Uh, Mango Mussolini, which I love. I mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, Cin Cinnamon Hitler. I don't know about that one. That's the number one. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> You're, he's literally cinnamon Hitler. <laughs> uh, it makes him actually it makes actually Hitler sound not too bad. It's like, well, he was cinnamon at least. <laughs> Ooh, you throw <laughs> throw a dash of cinnamon in there. Yeah, you know, you do it like the uh, the Salt Bay meme guy. You know, 
little that Zyklon B smells a lot like the <laughs> cinnamon cinnamon cinnabon, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I've been told. Uh Oh man! I think I think maybe that's CD Hitler's. I think that's Hitler's new plan. Like he's still alive, and he was like, "We'll kill the Americans with fatness by making cinnabons." Have you seen how many calories are just in one cinnabon? It's like insane. It's like your daily. I don't want to know. <laughs> it's like your daily intake. Yeah, ig- igno- ignorance is bliss. Yeah. <laughs> Next time you go to cinnabon, when it comes to cinnabon, anyway. <laughs> try 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 to look at the people standing in line for a cinnabon. They're usually very overweight. <laughs> but, yeah. Go. <laughs> Go on, with, go on with the Hitler names. <laughs> All right, uh, Darth Hader, mm. the the human corn cob. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like Is it that because one. of the husk, right? Okay, I think I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, um, Genghis Kant. Mm. Uh, Wah, wah. That's a stretch. That's reaching. Yeah. The xenophobic sweet potato. <laughs> <laughs> Who made uh, this list again? <laughs> Bart. I don't know. They, somebody just compiled it, man. Oh, okay. So it's what other um, people are calling them, and they just, just okay, stole them. Yeah. Ba- barbecued Brutus. <laughs> uh, the feral shouting meatball. <laughs> Meat wide, <laughs> meat wide, yeah, even better. Uh, vanilla Isis, eh, I think that's that was used towards uh, the uh, guys in Oregon that stand off, so eh, um, it's kind of a retread. Boring, yeah, so that, sad, yeah, not a disgusting, <laughs> total, total throwback, <laughs> total throwback. <laughs> Frankly. Pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> Pathetic. Um, Mang- sad. <laughs> <laughs> I love the sad ones. Sad. It's sad. Yeah, M- Mango Mussolini gets gets my vote. So. Yeah. <laughs> He'll build the wall on time. So. <laughs> you don't really have trains anymore. Yeah. So. Oh, by the way, this is a this. April Fool, like I was planning on doing something for April Fools, but we, I just couldn't get around to it. By the time I realized, oh shit, that's right, I was supposed to do something for April Fools. It was just too late to do anything. But I don't think anything we would have done ha- would have topped what Adult Swim did. Did you Did you see this? I, I, I hope to God you saw what happened with with Adult Swim. Uh, I think I read it, but I didn't. I didn't. Uh... So many things just passed through the net for me. <laughs> wow. Not a very... Not a very good social media guy. Okay. So there was basically two big April Fool's jokes. Before I go into the uh, Adult Swim, because that was, that was like the epic one. I think the runner-up had to be the porn. I think it was Pornhub or you porn or RedTube. It was one of those. Um, they had this nice little uh, <laughs> thing that was pissing everybody off. And that was when you went to Pornhub or whatever and you were watching the porn – it would show up at this pop up that said like thank you for sharing this to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And everybody what? was like freaking yeah. out about it. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the back button. <laughs> and there was like crap. a button that says like awesome. And then there was like another button that said like, oh my God, please revert this now. <laughs> <laughs> And then it was I think it would pretend like it didn't do it or something. So that was that yeah. was definitely up there. The other one was oh, that's um, classic. Yeah. I'm uh, about to cry. The other one was um I can't remember how exactly it went, but they were announcing that they were gonna that Adult Swim was gonna stream something. And when you went there they weren't streaming it. But what they were streaming was the first episode of season three of Rick and Marty. And it was amazing. <laughs> it was it was probably the best episode of Rick and Morty I've seen. I, I watched it like a couple of times. It was really that good. But there was something interesting that happened because of that episode. Um, there was kind of like a sub. I'm not going to say what happened in the in the episode, but there was a subplot that happened during the episode where they were basically inside Rick's head, and they were in like 1998, and it was like. <laughs> 
and they had to go and do something in order to give the information to the people who were like hacking his brain. And he was like, hold on, before we go over there, we need to go start by the McDonald's. He was like, you do know that if we sit you in this thing for too long, your brain will melt. He's like, it doesn't matter. I got to have the Szechuan chicken dipping sauce <laughs> that they only released for the Mulan movie. <laughs> Oh yeah, and it, and uh, so and then after that, it was like a big kind of like subplot that he wants to he was going to dedicate the rest of the show, even if it takes nine seasons, to trying to get McDonald's to re-release the Szechuan chicken. The good news is, McDonald's has responded to it, <laughs> <laughs> and there's like one of the chefs that works there, and he was like he was he's helping them push it through, and the official McDonald's Twitter uh, said like. Make lubba lubba dub dub on on their profile when someone was respond <laughs> asking about it. So I think we're gonna get the Szechuan chipping dip, dipping sauce over an April Fool's episode of Rick and Morty. All well, beautiful times. It's, a, it's we live amazing. In. <laughs> it's <laughs> redemption. I love it. Yeah. No, I I saw something too where like an unopened one was selling for an crazy a crazy yeah. amount on. Uh, I don't know. E- not, I don't know if it was eBay or uh, one of those. It was like somebody's bid like 99 gr- grand on it or something. <laughs> they can't possibly be good. <laughs> it's like 20 years old. No. It's almost 20 years old. No matter how Even with it- all, even, yeah, even being sealed with all the preservatives. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here, yeah. 98 McDonald's Szechuan dipping sauce is on eBay for 99 grand. Is it the sauce itself? Because there was one that we found that was going for like ten grand, and it was just a photograph of a Szechuan chicken dipping sauce. That's all it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. I don't know if anybody's bid on it, but it's up there apparently. Yeah. Yeah, people bid oh, no. on crazy yeah. shit on eBay. Yeah, like what was that Cheeto that looked like Harambe? Uh, <laughs> that was selling for yeah, like hundred grand or something. I yeah, I remember talking about that. Amazing. But that was Harambe, dude, okay? <laughs> Moment <laughs> not just some packet of sauce. I don't you know, know if this is a chef's our... chip dipping sauce. It was only a limited time release to promote the the movie Milan. We're, we're, we're gonna bring it back, Morty. <laughs> Morty, we're gonna bring it back. Take, even if it takes us nine seasons, we're gonna bring it back, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I just I just want I just want to see whoever bought it or whatever eat it. Oh, I, want, okay. I want a video of that. That needs to go on YouTube. I want to see them just yak or get rushed to the hospital. <laughs> you probably know it's going to be the LA Beast because the LA Beast loves to buy those old things on eBay. He was buying like 20-year-old bottles of um, Crystal Pepsi and drinking them and, and vomiting. because. Oh, the- <laughs> my God. More like crystallized Pepsi at yeah. that point, I would think. He's like, it's <laughs> coming out as a chunk. Yeah, I bought when they re-released Crystal Pepsi. I bought like a bunch of them, and then I wanted to save a couple, and mm-hmm. so I just had like two in my fridge, and I was just like, and when when I have like something, and, it, and I know that I'm probably not going to be able to replace it for a while, I'll tend to keep it until it goes bad. <laughs> I'm just one of those people, and <laughs> it was I bought it. What is I think they released it in August. And by December, it was bad. Like, it, like I tried drinking. I was yeah. like, ah, I better drink it because I heard they're going to re-release them. And I was like, oh, my God, it tastes like cardboard. It almost tastes like corked wine, <laughs> but corked soda. It was not good. Oh. <laughs> uh, maybe, it, maybe it'll cure cancer. Yeah. You know. But I still, start- <laughs> I still have one more that was unopened. And I was just, I'm just like, I'm just going to keep it in here for <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. And next time someone annoys me, I like, hey, you want a Crystal Pepsi? <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Some corked Crystal Pepsi. <laughs> bring it. Bring it to Jack Fest. I'll drink it. No, I'm just Are you yeah. going? <laughs> Are you going? No, I won't. Uh, I, I want to, man. I'm gonna plan on it. Are you... what? Where are you at on that? I'm 100 percent going. Even if even if I lose my job, Sweet. I will go. Uh, Baron, on the wow. other hand, will not. <laughs> so I, uh, I can get off. He won't lose his job or he won't go? Okay. He – okay, so we're doing the uh, the Hans Herman Hoppe sobriety removal service. Well, we were doing it, but I guess we're doing it again. We're going to try to organize a meeting between me, him, and then someone else who also used to come to it regularly and try to or- organize, like, when we're going to do it, how we're going to do it and everything. 
because uh, we're also going to move the day and everything, and everything and everything and mm-hmm. everything. But since he moved his, because he had to shift his days over to another day so that he could have the days that we were going to do it on off, rather than taking PTO, uh, and you know making their bosses upset. So he really pushed, and right. got everything he could to get those days moved. And then for him to go, oh, by the way, I need a week off to go <laughs> to go camping in the woods with a bunch of libertarians. And also maybe acid might be involved. <laughs> you know. um, so, allegedly. Alleged, allegedly. <laughs> so, yeah, he was like, ah, I'm out. I'm out. And I was like, oh, well, I'll just go alone. It'll be all right. <sighs> There's lots of people that I know there and uh, that who are regulars who go there. And so I made a lot of friends. So it'll it'll, it'll all work it worked out. It was a whole lot of fun. So, yeah, yeah. If you can't go, man, that sucks. <laughs> I highly recommend <laughs> Jackass. Is a whole lot of fun. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I, I love camping. I love you know. It's fairly close to me. So, yeah. Bring the, the plan is to get there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there's lots of stuff for kids to do. By the way, like they have, you know. There's a lot of kids that show up there, you know, even even for it being known about all the, the drug stuff that goes on. It's every time there's kids that are around, people are putting that stuff away. So they're really good about it. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Well, my, mine usually starts school around that time. Unfortunately, they're uh, in the uh, the school system. So we'll see. We'll school see. sucks. You might just have you might just. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but um, they're they're in better ones than, you know, just mm-hmm. a regular run of the middle public schools. So it's a. Uh, you might just have to settle for me, man. We'll, we'll see. That works. <laughs> but your, but your, <laughs> wife, I guess. your wife is a hustler, right? <laughs> so she's got to hustle on top of the fact she's got to look after the kids while you're gone. <laughs> yeah, she she's uh, she's the the bondo, the solvent that you know holds it all together. So. <laughs> yeah, does she complain? Is she a complainer about it? No, no, yeah. she's very stoic. Awesome. What? <laughs> Yeah, but I've been on this like this hardcore anti um, complaining th- thing for a while now. Um, I, I, I posted something on this on Facebook. I did like a Patreon only episode about like what I'm doing exactly. So you want to know the full details of what I'm doing? Let's go ahead. But to kind of give you like the rough idea of what I'm doing is I've just noticed from some some of the people that I know in real life and stuff it's just like complaining always like has been really bugging me lately and on top of the fact that I've been doing it a lot in real life and people have always told me like don't do that that's that's like really unattractive and it's annoying stop doing it but I kept doing it anyway and my kind of cover for it was like oh, I'm just joking whatever just joking around whatever and um, right. yeah it's like someone like I heard Gary Gary V cuz we were talking about Gary V before we started but Gary Vee was talking about, like, there's only two types of people that listen to you when you complain. And those are, you know, people who love you, who put up with you, you know, because they love you and they have to just have to deal with it. Like, th- those are the one of the people that will listen to you complain. The other people are your other loser friends who will complain just like you. And if you're, com- if you're complaining <laughs> that, you know, if you're complaining, it's your fault. And like, no matter what you're complaining about, it's going to be your fault. You know, if if you're complaining that life sucks or you're complaining that work, you know, you don't get paid enough, it's your fault for, for not improving yourself. And while you're sitting there complaining about it, why don't you get off your ass and do something about it? And that really that really fucking hit home. And I put like this this wallpaper on my phone that says stop complaining. And it was like one of the easiest things that I ever did. I had not com- I have not like really complained about anything for a whole month. Like I had a harder time learning how not to cuss versus this. <laughs> it was it was for so the, easy for the to fiends, do. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, <clears throat> I think it. You know, it's all about what you're complaining about, to whom, and how much. You know, every because everybody has things they need to vent about. You know, things they want to get off their chest, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, if you're if it's a constant like bombardment of negative energy or or complaining. Um, then you, yeah, you're wasting your time. Not only are you wasting your time, but you're wasting my time, other people's time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and yeah, I, it's, it's fun to commit. It's fun to commiserate and be like, Oh yeah, this sucks. And you know, move on, I guess. But if it's just a constant folk, your constant focus is just the negative stuff that's happening in life. Eh, you know, yeah. probably it's probably better off just shutting up. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I've, I've I've been doing it for a while, and people haven't figured out what's wrong with me. Like, like we're not wrong, but right with me. But, but people are like, "There's something different about you." I just can't. I don't know what it is, and I know what it is. <laughs> like, it's because I'm doing it, and I, and you know, like I'm, right. I'm I'm only talking about it because it's on a podcast, and I need things to talk about, and I think this is important. But there was like, there's been people who've been like, there's something different about you. I don't know what it is. And I know what it is, but I'm kind of doing the whole AA thing, which, by the way, I'm not a big fan of AA. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure I know. Are. But um, it's kind of like, don't show, don't tell them you're sober, show them you're sober. And like my, uh, my lady friend who's just been starting to talk to me again, I was like, okay, that's interesting, whatever. She was like, there's something, like, she was like, something different with you. There's something, she was like, I got it. You're not fucking complaining about everything anymore. <laughs> like I, I don't think I've heard you complain about one fucking thing since I, <laughs> I was like, oh shit, you figured it out. <laughs> You're on to me. Yeah, because she was the one that used and to that- like stop fucking complaining all the time. <laughs> but yeah, I just didn't listen to her. No, and and um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm listening to like G- um. Uh, Nick Hazleton and and uh, Bill Buper talk about stoicism. I've done a little research about that, and I don't know what that is exactly. And I'm sure my it's basically where you. I mean, I'm I'm no expert on it. Okay. So, but uh, <laughs> you're more of an expert than <laughs> it's, I am. It's essentially like it's essentially where you um, accept that the the nature of the world and you know what you can change and can't change. And even when you're beset by adversity or or things that are difficult, you try to look for the opportunity in them. Mm-hmm. So you know you get dealt a bum hand in life, and you know, you know you say, "Yeah, that fucking sucks." Or you can say, "Okay, well, it opened up," you know, or look for, <clears throat> you know, look at it logically, and try to find an opportunity there. Say, "Okay, well, yeah, it didn't go the way I wanted, but." It opened potentially opened this door, mm-hmm. or I learned this from it, so it wasn't a total waste. I think like the the Stoics at least initially used to like advocate um, going out and uh, even a few days a month or whatever, basically giving up all comfort. You know, just basically giving up food or um, you know material possessions or or whatever you're used to in the world, so that if you ever lost it. Uh, you w- it wouldn't be such a shock to you. Yeah, you know what I mean. So you say, okay, well, I've already dealt with that. You know, I've gone without food. I've gone, and I'm not advocating that yeah. level of it, but but that kind of mindset where it's like, you know, you don't cling so much to material or comfort things that are comfortable, or and you realize that yeah, things may have taken a, a shitty turn, but there's opportunity or you can learn something from it and grow and mature past it. Yep. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's kind of how I look at it. Like I are trying to look at it, I guess. Yeah. I, don't, it, I, there, there is some value into like, I guess the term is eating shit, <laughs> like not actually eating, food. <laughs> but you know, instead of going out and eating all the time or, um, you know, getting fancy things to cook. Like I was in k- ketosis for like a week or about two weeks actually or something like that. And I ended up having to kick myself out because I was like, you know what? I just, you know, sure. This is a great diet. Cause I get to eat like copious amounts of, of you know, awesome food. Fat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fat butter coffee. I- I'm all, all about all. that. <laughs> it's beautiful. But at the same time, it's really expensive, you know, cause you're eating meat. Meat's a really expensive thing, but you can spend a oh, yeah. lot more, a lot less money eating things like ramen, beans, rice, um, you know, <coughs> cruciferous vegetables, and those things really make your stomach feel full, and you get a lot of nutrients out of them, and they're really kind of like calorie deficient. And what all these diets are just basically, they're all at the end of the day is you're just eating less calories. That's the whole goal of every diet, no matter what you do, just eat less, right. eat less calories. Um, so I was just like, well, why am I spending all this money on that? So, I, so I'm going back and eating shit. <laughs> so I, and I went up <laughs> going grocery shopping the other day, and I just bought like a whole bunch of like, you know, dried beans and rice and pasta and uh, you know, like you know, ramen. I'm gonna go to the store and actually get proper ramen because I'm really good at cooking like actual ramen. You know, not. Oh uh, yeah, not I, I love ramen. I love noodles, man. Yeah, but yeah, not not the waxy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> packet flavored ones. Real, um, real ramen, udon, and stuff like that. Yeah, and making Absolutely. your own miso broth and all that stuff is great. 
So yeah, I'm going back into doing that, just just eating as cheap as I can, just saving all the money that I can, and just uh, you know try, trying to learn how to how to be like super frugal again because I've been I've been too fancy pants <laughs> lately. I've been way living too high, fancy pants. Living high in the hog, are we? <laughs> yeah, getting a little too fancy pants. How's that going to fit in with? Day. How's that going to fit in with your quest for sommelier? Oh, sommelier, uh, <laughs> yeah. five buck chuck. They had a they had a nice sale at, at the the liquor store. It was uh, they had the, the 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 sale where it was you buy one bot- bottle of certain types of wine and you get a bottle of equal or lesser value. That's that's also marked with that thing for one penny. So I was like, oh sweet, I'm gonna get a yeah. bunch of Melbecks. I got a cab because I couldn't find because there was a there was one that I couldn't find a uh, <laughs> um, equal value for that one except for like some Cabernet Sauvignon. I was like, you know what? I don't think I've ever had a cab. I just avoid it because it's that's what everybody drinks like that Merlot and Pinots. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I don't want a Merlot. <laughs> I'm not drinking any fucking Merlot. And I kind of I kind of don't drink Pinots because they're. <laughs> It's a varietal that wasn't very popular for good reason. You know, they're, they're, it's not. It's right. It's not a bad. It's not a bad varietal. It's just. It's just everybody drinks it because of fucking sideways. <laughs> like that's the because of, mo- of the movie, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is a great movie. Uh, have you seen that movie? You've seen it, right? Oh yeah, I I, I love. I saw yeah. it years ago, but I loved it, dude. Well, uh, what's his Michael Hayden Church yeah. or whatever his name is, and and uh, Giamatti. Yeah, <laughs> I pretty much watched anything with Giamatti in it, dude. He's 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 a riot, man. I love that dude. But, yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. That movie like put a dent in Merlot cells and like made Pinot Noir Boom. from like this varietal that like thirty people drink around the world to everybody drinking it. So like the mode, the market just exploded and all the prices are really high on it. It's like. And every time I try one, I'm always kind of like disappointed. It's like this is not what I like. I like, I like things that are like high in acidity, low in the sweet, very dry, you know, with right. like spice flavors. I'm not into big fruits, you know. High alcohol really burns. That you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that like, I like triple IPAs when I drink beer. So <laughs> why would I come to wine and be like, oh, oh yeah. I want something sweet? No, <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll, yeah. t- I'll take a white wine spritzer, <laughs> spritzer, spritzer. I have a white Zinfandel. <laughs> Do you have the Stutter Home yes. one? That one's really sweet. <laughs> Mix some orange <laughs> juice in it. I'll have a Mangria. Yeah, <laughs> yeah put, <laughs> put some ice cubes in it, please. <laughs> Okay, that's crossing the uh, line. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Everything yeah. else was pretty bad, but that—that's—that's when... that's where I draw the line. Ice cubes, no. Yeah, I, you don't put ice cubes in anything except hard liquor, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, whiskey or you know, scotch maybe. Yeah. Well, you know, ice cubes in beer, ice cubes in wine. That's you know, grounds really for ever. physical removal, <laughs> especially in red wine. It's like, why would you chill red wine? What do you right, do? Right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, I can see like putting the what the white wine in the in the uh in the refrigerator, but yeah. Yeah. Red's got to be room temperature or whatever, cellar temperature. It's, what were we talking about? Stoicism. <laughs> so, yeah, anyways, yeah. basically the idea was um so let me see if I get got this right. Uh it's basically not being a negative Nancy and then looking for opportunities in the things that aren't good. So, if you're Having trouble finding a cab and, you know, you're like you're sitting on the corner and raising your hand and there's just no cabs that are on duty. And you're like, damn it, this sucks. And instead of saying like, damn it, this sucks. My life sucks. I'll never get a cab. No one will ever pick me up. I wonder if it's my pants. Like, it's, it's definitely me. They don't like me. Rather than that, just going like, hey, I wish there was some sort of right. app that was on my phone that I can call a taxi and then like invent Uber. That's, then, that's basically exactly. stoicism. Okay, that's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. In a way. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, there you know, there's a few jumps to get there, but yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Or just learning lessons from the shit that went wrong, you know. Mm-hmm. I uh, uh I think it's uh, it's a I always heard that was like an ancient or a traditionally attributed to Chinese culture or that expectation uh, a saying that expectation is the source of all unhappiness. Well, how come they become so, communists? You know, you... <laughs> <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know. Ask Mal. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's dead like all the other people but, he killed. Thank God. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Well, no, thank God that he's great, dead, not the people he killed. You, you, right, right, you, right. You know, right. What I'm, you know what I'm saying. I don't want to be... I, don't I got want, you. I got you. It's going to be a taken out of context fiends anyway, but go ahead. Uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> um, but unfortunately, his legacy lives on. But yeah, you know, it's like when are you usually disappointed is when you expect a certain... Um, outcome or or result Mm -hmm. if you don't if you basically i'm not saying lower your expectations or don't have any but you know what i mean Mm -hmm. there is some truth to that like if you don't expect a certain result from an out you know whatever you know situation you're in which a lot of times you don't have uh, a lot of control over uh, and that's that's part of stoicism too as far you know Really, really condensed clip notes version here is is realizing what you have control over, Mm -hmm. realizing where you exist in the natural world, you know, and how much control you have over what's around you. Um, You'll be a lot less disappointed, I think, or likely to complain about things that, you know, or let it affect you too, you know. It's like, yeah, it went that way, but I'm not going to like let it ruin my fucking day or, you know, go to pieces about it. I'm going to try to make it the best of it and learn what I can from it, make a better opportunity. So, yeah. I don't know. Sounds awesome. That's my, that's, that's my thing on complaining, you know? So yeah, it looks like I got to, if you're going to complain a- <laughs> into that philosophy and see what's going on there. Who, who, if you're going to complain, at least buy me a drink first. You know? that's my <laughs> like, if you're going to sit there and bitch people me, listen I'm a gonna, lot longer. I'm gonna, yeah. yeah. I'm going to need to get drunk to listen to your crap. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, make it worth my time. Speaking of listening to people's crap, um, do you want to plug the contest? Because I don't think we mentioned it in the last show. And people have a good opportunity. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> well, I, I thought you were going to say, speaking of listening to crap, what's your podcast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you mentioned okay, it. Okay, I am brutal uh, no. with my humor, but come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm, I'm going to say it on uh, the next episode when you're not on to defend yourself. Go ahead. <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you. I'll self-deprecate all day, dude. Yeah. You know, I'm 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 a humble guy. Um, yeah, the contest. What's up with that? Where you rate and review the Lilberts, and um, what do you you can win a flag? Tell me more. <clears throat> okay, so if you go to iTunes or Stitcher and review the Lilberts, and by the way, it's perfectly okay for you to if you want to have two entries, uh, you can do one on Stitcher <laughs> and one on iTunes. I'll count them both. Uh, <laughs> it'll be all right. <laughs> Um, but the idea is you give a three, uh, or eh, four, was it four or five star review? If you give a three, you know what? I don't care. Just review the goddamn thing. If it's funny, <laughs> I'll post it, but I'm only going to make it eligible if you're, uh, if you're posting three or four, if you're posting three or four stars, you're good to go. But right now there's only two reviews that are eligible. Uh, Steve Miller Miller is not eligible because he's going to be the one that's going to be uh, doing the final verdict. By the way, if you're listening to this, I got to remind you: don't look at the reviews. You're not allowed to look at them; they're all going to be blind. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, Hide review. Thine eyes. Yeah, review them on Stitcher, or iTunes. Um, if it's funny, uh, you'll win a prize, and we're going to have some some uh, booby prizes as well, which are going to be like some you know, I'll probably give you like a pack of Libertarians Against Humanity or. Uh, so some bips, yeah. some bip strongs, but the winner gets a um, it's, it's the Bobby Hill anarcho capitalist Gadsden flag that says that's my purse. I don't know you. It's the one. <laughs> by the way, the picture of me holding that flag I keep finding on the internet everywhere, and people keep like <laughs> linking me like, "Hey, you're famous now." Like some page with like a million likes just shared this picture with you holding that flag, and I've seen it on Reddit. <laughs> Across, like not just nice. the anarcho capitalist group or something like that, like on like right. weird subreddits that I've never heard of, or uh, you know, that are really popular. And it's like, man, I, I keep seeing it. If you look, if you Google image search, I'll, you know, I'll put, I'll put the picture in there, do a Google image search on this picture, and you can find it all over the place. But yeah, you can win that flag. I'm giving that flag away. I still have one, it's in a pack with a bunch of other goodies and stuff. Um, yeah. And all you got to do is just make a funny review, and then we'll do a uh, a blind review on it. But we got to have more reviews than this. Come on, man! Two, I can't do a contest with two people. <laughs> <laughs> They're funny, by the way. Yeah. There's some competition here, but come on, y- y- your chances Quite are really for quantity good. and 
quantity and quality here. Yeah, quantity folks. and quality. Uh, I'd read one of them because one of them is really good, but then I know I know Steve Miller Miller would listen to it, <laughs> so I want him to have a completely yeah, unbiased no, review of it. So, and you're eligible. No, He's no the only spoilers. One that's not eligible. For it. Sweet. <laughs> Well, if if, if uh, Miller Miller is on it, dude, I gotta I'm not step up my game because that that guy knows his comedy. Yep. So. Yep. Uh, challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> so yeah, but I think that was it. Uh, Kratom. Did Amazon? Yep. Use our affiliates. Is there anything else you wanted to plug? <laughs> your your crappy podcast, <laughs> as as you think I was gonna say. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, man. Check me out at Zombies Government New Podcast. It's uh, unwieldy but fun, or ZGY as I like to call it. Uh, f- Facebook, Twitter, obviously iTunes, Stitcher, mm-hmm. and uh, good times, man. Yeah, you can review you can review that podcast there, but you won't be eligible for a prize. Yes. So. No. Well, I might get down to that someday. <laughs> Not today. I'm gonna go take a nap, dude. I'm I'm beat. I've yeah. been at work all night, so. <laughs> But uh, it's been fun, man. All right, man. Have a good one. Worms. I don't, I don't care about saying it. Worm. Worms. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, did, I did that on my last show. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's going around. Yeah. It's a thing. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, in this country, and in a bunch of Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about FiendPhone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com, F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com, Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone, I never knew remote audio could be this good.